<laughs> so we're starting off this test drive with the 2022 Subaru Forester Touring. I'd like to thank Scarborough Subaru for accommodating me in this test drive. Now my initial rounds of just fielding the vehicles, I did like how the Subaru had ample space. It felt very spacious inside. For the driver's side, the passenger side, the rear seats, the it it felt like there's a lot of space inside. Cargo space was pretty decent too. And there was plenty of head clearance. At fourteen ninety nine. Offer ends Wednesday. Certain conditions apply. Details in store at Lowe's.ca. Your happiest spring starts at Lowe's. Nee, nee, see my. I also liked how all the windows were huge. The front was was this huge window. You can see very far ahead, and you can see high up. Blind spots. It, I had almost complete 360 view from the driver's side. Now my research also indicated that the the Forester doesn't have a very kicky engine. It, it goes from 0 to 60 inside of around 8 seconds. I don't need anything that's overly torquey or you know that can hit those speeds really quickly. So something like this for me would have been perfectly adequate. Now here's one complaint I do have to bring up. There, there's just so much going on around here. You've got your front dash, you've got this monitor on top, which displays quite a lot of information to, like, for something this small. And then you've also got the infotainment system. And then you've also got below that, you've got manu uh, you've got analog controls, and you've got the center console. There's just so much going on. It's a lot of distractions. That, that is one of my main complaints about the uh, Forester. Look this is actually not too bad. And me just being a little bit nitpicky here, I wasn't crazy about the sound system on board either. It doesn't have that nice clarity and fidelity that I was used to on my Jeep Compass. And it sort of lacks a lot of the, it lacks a lot of the uh, customization as well. Like, sure, I can play around with the bass and the treble and the sound placement, but I just find that it, it, I just I couldn't get the music to play with the uh, the great sound quality and clarity that I'm I'm just used to. But I do like the sensor placement for their um, their Subaru EyeSight safety features. It's out of the way. It's not mounted behind the rearview mirror like a lot of other car brands do. So I can still clearly mount my dash cam while still retaining that low profile stealth. Performance there. 
一个诶个 gas 咧，差到好似冇个车咁啊！你要揿大啲先行，可以行行得快啲嘅。啊，诶、um, ，start stop， start stop 咧系你停嗰时咧个个 engine 会自己收嘅，自己删嘅。你嗱，删咗啦，然后一开车。Yeah, it's a little jarring. There are a lot of cars now have this called start stop. Start stop is when you stop the light. The engine will be turned off. If you stop the light, it will be turned off. So, what do you do? You press the gas button and you will be able to go back. It will help you. 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 Now, this Forester has this start stop feature, which you know, I didn't really expect it. I, I discovered it by accident during this test drive. And the engine rumbles quite a bit when you hit the gas. So it was a little jarring for me. It was a little unexpected. Uh, I don't know about the long-term use of something like this, uh, especially for sitting driving when I'm constantly stopping and starting at a red light or in traffic where this creature will probably kick in. So I'm a little worried about, um, about the long-term uh, use of this on the engine. Because right now, I don't think anyone has a clear, definite answer as whether this is okay for the engine. Yeah, you'll, you'll probably save yourself some gas from the long haul, but um, uh, you know, what, at what cost and potential damage to the engine? Delivering coast to coast. Visit in store or online for a personal virtual product demonstration at CanadianAppliance.ca. Are you a CAA member? Well, lucky you. At Shell, you'll save three cents per liter on fuel, plus get 10% off car wash and in-store purchases. Just swipe your CAA card or load your CAA number to Shell app once for ongoing savings. See Shell for your experience and the Good Life Community Connection you can miss it. Sign up now to get four weeks free. Drop by a club or visit goodlifefitness.com slash get you back. Oh my god. Hmm? Oh, you're Drive the Dia. Manual. Yep. Today's weather is a brisk minus 22, with a chance of sunshine reaching a tropical 36 by noon. Sometimes you just don't see things coming. Yeah, they Save for real at Real Canadian Superstore until March 30th. Earn 25,000 points for every hundred dollars spent on water, electronics, mm. baby, and more. That's like 25 dollars in points. Go ahead, go ahead. For real at Real Canadian Superstore with PT Optimum. See Claire for details. Coming to showcase, John Cameron Mitchell is Joe Exotic. Welcome to the best exotic animal show in the United States. Keep okay, I'm seeing that. Now you're gonna do that. Witness the origin. Yeah. 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 We're heading out on the 401. We have some problems. 401 East got a whole series of them. Trouble in the west. Come on. Hmm. This is not a big car. We still have problems on the 401. So here we're getting into a 2020 Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. They didn't have any 2021s available at the time, but some were on their way in. 
This one, however, literally just came in a lot, so they didn't even do the safety check yet. So there's going to be some issues. Otherwise, the drive experience and the general layout would have been pretty much the same. Um, they have the sunroof, but the thing is, it, it, you lose a lot of headroom with oh, the sunroof yeah. for some Definitely. reason. Yeah. I barely, I, I was, I barely fit in the, well, I barely had any headroom in the. Oh. On because that you're a tall guy, big guy. Yeah. Do I saw enough gas? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're uh, just under half. Okay. Good. It's okay. It's not bad. So, right off the bat, I do like the layout. There's a lot of analog controls around, uh, which you know Jeep is kind of known for having. So you don't necessarily need to have use the infotainment system to control everything. And on the infotainment system, it's a fairly decent sized screen. The only thing is, it's there's it looks kind of cluttered, but it's organized very well in the way it, it's a lot like if you ever if you're familiar with the use of your smartphone, this will feel very natural for you. That 9-speed automatic transitions fairly smoothly. Its acceleration is a little bit lackluster, but not as much as the Subaru was. But that's not a big deal for me. Now this is me coming from driving both my Compass and my mother's Wrangler. It handles like the Compass. You can take your corners quite nicely, it hugs the road quite well, but it has that power, that feel, the height of the Wrangler. So this vehicle is a sort of like a nice combination between the two, that subcompact SUV and the midsize SUV. I'm 
we break here? No, you can go this way. Mm -hmm. This way. Okay. I'm used to do parking at old school without having to use the backup camera, mm, but yeah, she needs it. I would like to thank Road Sport Chrysler for allowing me to test drive this vehicle. And the last car for the day, the Mazda CX-5 GT with a turbo engine at Scarborough Mazda. Now I. I put this vehicle up on the list because it ticks off almost, well, most of my requirements. But more importantly, because this is primarily for the wife, it ticks off almost most of hers as well. As well as having that stylish look that she really enjoys. Great. So you can see how fast you're going on the morning and how fast it's on the roadside as well. So you got a roadside recognition. Let's say this road going for 40, mm -hmm. you would say 40 roadside on yeah, the Yeah, I see it. Got it. Mm. Just over here. Okay. So this one is the most popular people will see because you see a little car over here. It's actually your car right now. Yes. So any safety warning, let's say you're too close to a vehicle in front of you, you got a warning, you're going to show up over here. Yeah. Right? If someone passing by you on your buying spot, uh, buying spot you also show the warning over here. Okay. Then give assistance, also show over here. So that's the screen right now with navigation. So you use the uh, joystick over here to control the whole screen. Okay. okay. And I turned it on the heated seat for you guys already. Yep. Heated steering wheel. Just to mention, one of the features only for GT as well is the fender latest seat over here. Mm. So the cooler addition doesn't come with it. Yeah. Yeah, but it depends if you really need it though. So right now you will feel some air coming from the seat. Do you own Apple CarPlay or the Android Auto? So you park in your phone, you can actually like, use Google yeah. Map. Now I do have to give a special shout out to Jackson here, the sales rep. When I booked this test drive with Mazda, I specifically asked for a sales rep that could speak Cantonese because I have a hard enough time trying to explain a lot of this to my wife. So it was great having someone there that could speak her language better than I could to explain all the features and answer all her questions as well. Right now, get an amazing phone plan with 10 gigabytes for $55 a month. The twin uh, size is your radio, right? You basically can't hear anything outside. So yeah. that's yeah, one of the improvements oh. for last generation. Ah, this is the same thing. Do you hear it? Do you hear it? Well, yeah, you, you should be able to hear something like that, right? Of course, yeah, yeah if they sing loud. Oh, they're saying I'm Oh, they're saying I'm dull. Yeah, just, you know, some crazy people walk in, never walk in next to you, and there's a... My hoi ya chang, gumma, hoi ya chang. Hoi ya chang, I hoi ya chang, I hoi ya But, it's a sound sound, I don't know what to do. Oh. So using a six speed automatic instead of the CVT transmission. Oh, okay. So that's why you feel the old every gear like gear one gear do you feel. Mm -hmm. Oh, so what are the two controls that's behind the wheel here? So that the uh, pedal shiver. So you can pretend oh, okay. that you're driving manually. Oh, okay. so oh yeah, so that's because I still exactly. the manual. Yeah. 
But this feature is on. Mag M is it? GT only. GT only. And you see the sign over here. You see a little car in, uh, in front of you. Yep. That's that car. Yeah. So if you're getting too close, you will get oh. a warning. And eventually, if you don't break the car, you're almost gonna get in an accident. The car is gonna break for you. Oh, okay. You will also see on the windshield as well. So all the warning you're gonna see on the windshield. Yeah,可能是那個樣子 我們的Overdrive是predictive的 do you also have uh, the stretch stop feature on this or no? Uh, what is it? Stop? The, the stretch stop feature? Like you know when you, when you stop to, for too long and uh, the engine shuts off? It's gonna hold it brake for you? Um, no, it, the engine shuts off you stop for too oh, long. No, no, no. Yeah, okay. Yeah, shut it off? No. Yeah, I was, I was a little, that was a little jarring when, I was, when we were trying it yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's um... It, what, uh, when we're trying the, uh, the Forester, it's uh... We came to a, 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 a traffic stop, and all of a sudden the engine just cut out. Okay. And then as soon as, yeah, as soon as you hit the gas, it starts again, it, and it, it shakes the whole car. And, and that was a little jarring. And they were saying it's gonna save you on gas as well. Now this car is a really nice drive. It's fun to drive. It's responsive. It's got a really nice, very good driving dynamics, but. Uh, let's put that aside for a moment and let's just appreciate the, the interior of this car. It's gorgeous. It feels really nice and it's relatively spacious. I mean, it's a little bit on the tight side, but not too much. But, but everything is laid out really nicely. It's got a really nice premium feel to it. And I like how it's not anywhere near as cluttered. Like, the Subaru was totally cluttered. The Jeep is, well, it's naturally a little bit more cluttered, but nowhere near as bad as the Subaru. But everything over there with that is at least everything has a purpose. Here everything is more refined. It's it's a nice layout, very minimalist for that really nice premium feel. Oh, So with these three cars now in consideration and on the chopping block, we went home with a lot of things to think about and to consider. And in a few days, we will have come and to make a decision. But ultimately, it's going to come down to affordability, ease of driving, enough room for our family, and a little consideration for fuel economy, as well as reliability. So stay tuned for our announcements of which vehicle we're going to go with. You may be surprised or you may not be.